in the park are putting the final touches on a world premiere happening right here in Cincinnati. Yeah, Rutka is an indie rock musical that tells the life story of Rutka Laskier, a Jewish teenager who lived in 1943 Poland during the Holocaust. The show opens on Thursday, and here to talk about it is Blake Robinson, producing artistic director at the Cincinnati Playhouse in the park. Blake, thank you so much for being here this morning. We Good morning, appreciate friends. it. Good morning, friends. Yes, first time on our, our arc set here at 8, so. It, it's, it's absolutely awesome. You've got thank a whole you. little theater set right behind We do, we, we, we do. We kind of do. And we utilize the props often, so. And it's, it's nice to have the time to, to kind of have an extended conversation with you about this show in particular because it is this sort of international premiere. It is a show that already has Broadway buzz. Let's just, before we even get into the story of the show, mm -hmm. how meaningful is it for the Playhouse to have a chance to do a show like this? When we built the new Playhouse, which opened 18 months ago, one of our goals was to be a launching ground for Broadway-bound musicals. Mm, yeah. It's something we couldn't do in the old space. As much as we loved the old Marx Theater, it was sort of idiosyncratic in its makeup. But the new theater, Mo and Jack's Place, the Rouse Theater, is the exact same dimensions of virtually all of the Broadway theaters in New York City. Oh, wow. So now we're in conversation with Broadway producers awesome. who always want to test out their product sure. in another city before they bring it into New York. And that's exactly what Rutka is. It's the first one of those for our Playhouse. And I think the whole city should be super proud that we are creating something here in Cincinnati. It's a Playhouse production that will then make its way to the Great White yeah, awesome. So smart, That's awesome. so smart. Yeah. What, uh, I was reading before we got here today about the, the, the play and one re reviewer or person who is, knows about it says that this is, a, this is what that theater was built for. It was built for a show like this. I had a patron who said that to me just the other day in yeah. the lobby. I'm so glad this is exactly what the Playhouse should be doing along with all the other wonderful things that we do. Uh, it, it's a tremendous story. Uh, about hope and resilience, we got this amazing cast of, uh, of kids. You've seen some of the, you know, some of the scenes rolling right. here while we talk. Uh, the, they're bringing the the energy. They're bringing the love. Yes, it is set, you know, during the Holocaust period. But what's so unique about it is that you're viewing this historical time, which we all know a lot about, through the eyes of teenagers. Mm. Uh, Anne Frank was trapped in an attic, but Rutka and her friends are out in the streets trying to make their lives work while you know all the craziness is yeah. happening around them so at, at its essence it's a coming of age story and it's a it's a true story right it's an absolutely true story Ritka last year wrote her diary over several months and then she hid it in the floorboards mm. of her tenement house and one of her best friends a young polish woman found the diary and saved it for decades and decades and it was published not too long ago uh, and wow. our friends in New York optioned that, are turning it into this beautiful new musical, which, uh, which will make you think, it'll make you cry a little bit, it'll sure. make you laugh, uh, and it's, it's, it's full of energy and heart. Inevitably, those comparisons to Anne Frank, we're, we're, we're gonna come with a, with a show like this. How important do you think it is to have another view of the Holocaust, another young voice with that view. Obviously, no one's ever gonna forget about uh, the Diary of Anne Frank, mm -hmm. uh, but to have Rutka, I, I would imagine, adds an extra piece. I think the more voices we hear about that time period, the better. Yeah. Uh, everybody studies Anne Frank in, in, in sure. high school, right? Uh, and sometimes Rutka last year is referred to as the Polish Anne Frank. In a strange twist of history, Anne Frank and Rutka Laskier were born on the same day. Oh my no. gosh, no Isn't way. Isn't that crazy? That is crazy. Yes, yes. Wow. And, but I want to emphasize, Rutka's story is very different from Anne Frank's because she's out in the world. Yeah. And so you, it's almost like you're plopped in the middle of this Jewish ghetto while all the craziness is starting to happen. And, and you're there with these teenagers rooting for them. Yeah, so it's a different, different perspective than you would obviously see from Anne Frank, um, although many of the same stories and themes that you're going to see. But... Uh, could you tell us why you think this is important to have a show like this continue um, in, in this year? And, and well, why story, audiences need to see it? Sure, I mean, these stories are important. We all know there's been a rise of anti-Semitism uh, in the world, so that in and of itself uh, is a reason to do you know, serious probing material in a form which is uniquely American. You know, the musical theater uh, is, is, is what makes the American theater great. Uh, so to be able to 
put those two things together and tell the story in a new, interesting way is something else. Uh, I should also note that the, the music itself is very, very cool. Yes. Uh, two members of the band Pearl and the Beard, this indie rock band for Brooklyn, have reunited uh, to write the score for this. Nice. The, the book of the musical, which is, which is what theater people call the play itself, the scenes in between the songs, uh, are written by Nina Bieber, who was uh, one of the executive producers of The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Oh, wow. <laughs> Another show that people absolutely adore. So sure. uh, yeah. we've got the A-team nice. here in Cincinnati putting this thing together. And I, I, I'm glad you touched on the music a little bit in terms of the actual sound because it's described as indie rock musical. And I, I don't necessarily think anyone has necessarily put together indie rock musical and Holocaust. Right. <laughs> do, do, do you know what I mean? In, in the same, and it's, yes. it's how do you find, but, but then again, if you would have gone back, you know, to the French Revolution, nobody probably would have thought, you know, Les Mis and let's have it Les tune. Mis with a 60 piece orchestra, right? Co We're going to do the French Correct. Revolution. Yeah. Um, you know, when we say indie rock, I guess you, you might think of musicals like Spring Awakening or Next to Normal, ah, if you're okay. familiar with sure. musical theater. Um, Pearl and the Beard, you know, kind of falls into this, you know, Brooklyn indie rock scene like Annie DeFranco, the Lumineers, mm -hmm. bands like that. Sure. Uh, and uh, Jeremy Lloyd Styles and Jocelyn McKenzie, the two members who are creating the music, are absolutely wonderful. They're way cooler than I've ever been. I can tell you right <laughs> that. Uh, so that alone, I just want to be in the room with them and take in all this music and this incredible story. Directed by Wendy C. Goldberg, who is an associate artist at the Playhouse. She's done lots of shows over the years, uh, but this is by far the biggest and most important to our Playhouse. What about technology and using projection in the way that it's used? Because that that's something new, new for the Playhouse, at least yeah. at, at that level, I would I'm imagine. I'm so glad you brought that up. You know, we have a state-of-the-art theater now. We've got all the bells and whistles. We've got all the toys. The, the, the scenery uh, for the show, as you can see right here on the screen, is absolutely colossal. And we now have the ability to bring things in from up above, mm -hmm. in from the sides. We've got a giant new uh, stage elevator that brings stuff up from underneath. Uh, and these projections. Are uh, those are her words? Those are her oh, words wow. uh, projected oh, wow. onto the set. Yeah. Uh, and, and it keeps changing. We can make we can put you anywhere, any place we need to be. Uh, and it can be very representative yeah. or, or just illustrative like that. Uh, it's wonderful, wonderful. Uh, you know, meeting of technology and classic theater. Mm. Mm. Just it, spectacular. Yeah, <laughs> ASA just gives you so many more options as yeah. as a director. When you have, this is a, this is a difficult way to say. It. When you have access to that many sort of new toys, mm -hmm. how, how long does it take you to to get used to all of the things you have at your disposal? Uh, that's a great question. You're 18 uh, months yeah, in. Yeah. You have it all. <laughs> We're have it all, got it all figured out now. That's right. <laughs> um, certainly, there are always some surprises. You know, you buy a new car and you're learning how all the stuff <laughs> right, on the right. dashboard works. <laughs> sure. It's sort of like that. I still that. can't use the radio in my car. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Certain ways. Um, but we have the best. A crew yeah. of technicians yeah. and production people in the country here at Playhouse in the Park. Uh, these wonderful Broadway designers who have come down uh, know exactly what they're doing and they love being here. We hear that from the performers too, the ones who are guest it. artists who come in from out of town. Uh, the new facility puts our best foot forward. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're able to do things that we were never able to do on stage before at the Playhouse. And it really is just another notch in our belt here in Cincinnati of saying we've got this world-class facility we can bring in world-class people. We can design shows that can go to Broadway just because of the way the theater is set up. It's That's just right. It's another part of the, the, the Cincinnati arts juggernaut right. yes. uh, that we have here in the city. Uh, one of the crown jewels. Blake, thank you so much thank for coming so much. in. Uh, before we let you go, uh, ticket information, dates, how long are we running, all that kind of stuff. Uh, we're running right now. We go for the next four weeks into early November. Uh, call the box office. You'll get an actual person you can talk to. Hey, or, you can buy them, or you can buy tickets at CincyPlay.com. Excellent. Break a leg. Yeah. Um, congratulations. Thank you on both what's so much. Be an thank outstanding you so much. Production. Sure, you could stop watching now, but let's be honest, you want to see more. So click some of those links, or better yet, go ahead and tap subscribe. That way you'll catch more content from Local 12.